What is up, everybody? Random, random man here bringing you... Wait, hold on. Before I begin, I just want to take a sec to appreciate the posters I have up here on my walls. I mean, I see them every day, especially when I sit here at my desk, but it's always nice to take a sec or two to take in all the vibrancy that they have. <laughs> Wait. Was I supposed to be doing something? Hmm. I wonder. What is up, everybody? Random, random man here, bringing you another video during this current quarantine era. I hope everyone out there is continuing to stay safe and be well during this unpredictable time. And uh, since my last video, actually, I've gotten my first of two vaccinations, and I am feeling good so far. I'm going to get my second one in a few weeks, and uh, I hope anyone and everyone out there is able to safely get themselves vaccinated, and hopefully we can return to a sense of normalcy in the near future. But that is not why you clicked on this video. You clicked on this video for me to bring you my review for The Father. Based on Florian Zeller's 2012 play, Le Père, which is this film's title in French, the plot of this drama basically follows an aging man, played by Anthony Hopkins, who must deal with his progressing memory loss. Going into this movie, I was very much looking forward to seeing it. Ever since I heard buzz about it, all the way at last year's Sundance Film Festival back in 2020. And now it has since been over a year since audiences first laid eyes on this film and it's gotten much critical acclaim, much awards buzz, and as of late, it has received six Oscar nominations this year. And this was the only Best Picture nominee that I hadn't seen up until now. Recently, this movie has become available digitally on PVOD for a $20.48 hour rental period. So now people are able to watch this thing from the comfort of their own homes, just like I opted to do for this movie, though it is still available in theaters if there are any out there that are still playing it and if one is so willing to go out there and see it that way. Starting out with the cast and the performances, we have Anthony Hopkins as our title character who is also named Anthony. Now, it goes without saying that Anthony Hopkins is one of the greatest actors, I think, ever. I mean, across different mediums he has acted in, he really has shown and proved himself to be a class act. And here with this now Oscar-nominated performance of his, I think that he probably delivers the performance of a lifetime here. He is playing someone who is suffering from dementia, and we are put in his perspective throughout. And part of his performance does have us empathizing with what he is going through in that he really is losing grasp as to what is around him and his memory. And he also has a personality to him as well. He made me not only feel for him, but also laugh along with him at times because he is a very charming and funny character in certain moments. But ultimately, this is a serious performance and a searingly sorrowful one at that in Hopkins holistically heightening what helped get me effectively engrossed into this movie in the first place through his performance and also Olivia Coleman's Best Supporting Actress nominated turn as his daughter. Now like Hopkins, Coleman carries a lot of emotional weight across this movie as well, with her being on the literal outside of Hopkins' character's mind in trying to get through to him and also trying to figure out the best way he is cared for because she can't be there all the time for him. And that is ultimately why she is deserving of the recent Oscar nom she got for this film. I mean, she's already an Oscar winner, just like Hopkins is as well. But these two really show off why they are among the most talented actors working right now. Other actors do show up here and there, such as the likes of Imogen Poots and Rufus Sewell. But I do not want to give away what their performances entail because it is plot related and their characters have specific integrations as to how the narrative does progress. So leaving it mainly 
exactly at the main two performances here, they are phenomenal. The writing of this film was co-written by its director, Florian Zeller, who adapts his own play into this movie. And we've recently gotten a couple of film adaptations of plays in the past year and are also at play in this year's award season. Those films being Ma Rainey's Black Bottom and One Night in Miami, which I both liked a lot, but I think what The Father does in separating itself from those two is that it elevates itself in being more cinematic in its framing and execution. Compared to how Ma Rainey's Black Bottom and One Night in Miami were mainly conversationalist and dialogue heavy, The Father puts us in the perspective of its title character and how he is deteriorating mentally. And it's so potently done to where it has a subtlety about it while also being very direct in certain moments that show, yeah, he is not either feeling himself or he thinks something is wrong at almost any given moment that he feels off. And part of this does have to do with Zeller's directing behind the camera too. The majority of this film is set in the apartment flat where Hopkins' character lives in. And this is where I have to give a big shout out to the overall look of this movie as in addition to Oscar noms for picture, acting, and writing, this movie also has a nod for best production design. And the way the apartment flat looks, with it having a long narrow hallway in the middle of it, with two doors at either end, and just the overall aesthetic, it was not only catching to the eye, but also reinforced how we are supposed to feel for Hopkins' character and are put in the same perspective as him. Also, the cinematography, with it being very low-key, but very effective in how shots are set up and framed for Hopkins in what he does or what he may or may not forget in any given scene. Also receiving an Oscar nomination here is the film's editing, which is key in how the movie does flow all together. It specifically applies to how Hopkins is interacting with other characters in this movie, whether it's his daughter or some other people that I did not want to mention before out of giving away spoilers, because some scenes are either repeated verbally through dialogue or shown again, or even done out of order to put us further into the perspective of Hopkins' character. And it also benefits the pace as well because of how it runs for over, just over 90 minutes. And it feels so tight in us getting into the conflict that Hopkins is literally fighting with all together in this movie. And I just couldn't help myself in feeling so enveloped by the struggles that he was going through. And by the end of it, it really did have me feel choked up in how this guy really is feeling or fighting something that is just difficult to deal with. I've not had anyone in my life deal with either Alzheimer's, dementia, or just all around memory loss. And it just makes me imagine or not really imagine that much how someone can even deal with it because of the sense of losing memory or just trying to hang on to a thread that you may or may not have be there the next day or even the next moment. Overall, I found The Father to be fantastic. I was really moved by this movie in the end, and had I seen this movie in the actual year of 2020, this would have certainly ended up in my top 10 favorite movies of the year, although now retroactively I'm gonna definitely put it on that list. This doesn't necessarily mean that I am gonna be willing to go back to this movie either often or again really soon, as it's really heavy in subject matter as I've emphasized across this review. Six years ago, I saw and reviewed Still Alice, starring Julianne Moore, who deservingly won an Oscar for Best Actress in playing a similar kind of role to Anthony Hopkins' character, though there is an age difference between them. It just makes me feel all the more empathetic to those that are facing Alzheimer's slash dementia and the loved ones around them as well. In any sense, I love The Father and I highly recommend it. Now that I've seen and reviewed it and have done so for all eight of this year's Best Picture nominees, stay tuned in the coming weeks for my predictions and preferences videos for this year's Oscars. There are other Oscar nominees that I do want to have seen before I do make that video as I'm trying to see 
as many of the nominees as I can, but either way, stay tuned for what's to come with my annual video there. My final verdict for the father is four and a half out of five stars. Thank you all, as always, for watching. Be sure to like this video, comment on what you thought of the father, social media links in the description, subscribe to my channel for more, and I'll catch you on the next movie review.